I don't care if you have a computer science degree or not. It does not matter if you have no coding experience. You will be able to learn programming if you can answer these three questions. Number one, which programming language should you learn? How to learn it really fast? What are the best resources to learn it? Let's cover them one by one. When it comes to choosing a programming language, there are two ways to think about it. If you already know what kind of developer you want to become, then you can pick a language based on that. If you have no preference and you want to quickly start building things, then you can pick one of the popular languages. I'll tell you the ones I recommend. But before that, let's see how to pick a programming language based on the job you want. I'll cover the four most popular jobs here. Let's start with mobile development. If you want to build native apps for iPhone, pick Swift. For Android, you can learn Kotlin. When I say native apps, what I mean is the apps that run only on one platform, either iOS or Android. There is a way to write one app that can run both on iOS as well as Android. This way of building apps is called cross-platform mobile development. There are two platforms that are popular for cross-platform development, React Native and Flutter. React Native is based on React, which is a popular JavaScript library. So learn JavaScript for React Native. For Flutter, you'll have to learn this open source programming language called Dart. If you want to do web development, there is front-end and back-end. For front-end, you can choose between React and Angular. As we discussed earlier, you'll have to learn JavaScript for React. For Angular, you'll have to learn TypeScript, which is the statically typed version of JavaScript. It's not that different from JavaScript. For the back-end, we have all kinds of choices that I don't want to get into. One of the popular options is JavaScript with Node. So to cover both front-end and back-end, you can simply start with JavaScript. Next, we have AI. For AI, Python is the undisputed champion. Lastly, we have game development. If you want to develop games using Unity, you can learn C Sharp. For the Unreal Engine, you'll need C++. Now I understand that all of this can be very confusing. That's why I have already covered it in much more detail in this earlier video. If you're feeling overwhelmed with all of this, I have two recommendations for you. In the beginning, most people want to see some quick progress and progress comes from building things. Two languages that will help you build things fast are Python and Java. Script. I'm not saying that other languages are bad. It's just that these languages will be very easy to pick as a beginner. So you have picked a programming language. How can you learn it really fast? Let's assume that the circle represents everything there is to know about the programming language you want to learn. Within this circle is another smaller circle which is roughly 20% of the size of the outer circle. This inner circle contains concepts like conditionals, for loops, functions and classes etc. What's not included in this circle are advanced concepts like generators, comparators or iterators. Now if you pick any git repository written in the chosen language, what you'll find is that 80% of the code in this repository comes from 20% inner circle. This is called 80-20 rule of programming. To move fast, you need to learn these 20% core concepts of the language and move on. Learning programming and learning a programming language are two different things. But when I was a beginner, I did not understand this. That's why I kept doing these 30-40 hour programming tutorials again and again to give me a false sense of making progress. Experts call this phase of learning programming a tutorial hell. If you follow the 80-20 rule of learning programming, you will not get stuck in the tutorial hell. Now I'm not saying that we don't need to learn any concepts outside this 20% circle. We will slowly expand this inner circle to become bigger over time. I'll show you how to do that later in this video. But for now, we need to focus on finding the best resources to learn these 20% concepts. But for that, we need to know the best way of learning programming which is active recall. Instead of casually watching, in active recall, you first understand a concept and then you test yourself on what you just learned with the help of exercises. This will force you to actively retrieve information from your brain and this is called active recall. Numerous studies have shown this over and over again that active recall is one of the best ways to retain what you are learning. All of this theory is great but how do you actually apply this in practice? Luckily for us, there are many websites that teach and test you with the help of interactive exercises. I'll tell you three of them but there must be many others. For Python, we have learnpython.org. For JavaScript, we have W3 schools and then there is Code Academy as well. First two are completely free but Code Academy might be paid depending on the course you want to do. Since this video is not sponsored by anyone, you can pick any of the resources I'm sharing today. I will leave all the links in the description. But if you feel like supporting our channel, you can subscribe. Now before we can talk about how to get a job after learning coding, I need to tell you one important thing. So far, we have only learned a programming language. We still don't know how to program. What do I mean by this? If you want to truly learn programming, you need to build the ability to take any complex problem, break it down into smaller sub-problems and solve them using programming. That's what software engineers do in a nutshell. But how can you do that? The answer is quite simple. Practice. 
you start taking on and solving new problems and do this over and over again, you will keep improving your programming skills. When you do this, you'll also expand your 20% inner circle because you'll encounter new concepts in the process. But what kind of problems can you solve? You can start with something simple and build a basic tic-tac-toe game. Once you have done that, you can move on to intermediate projects like writing a program that runs tournaments or a program that schedules classes so that they don't overlap. After that, you can build slightly more complex projects like an algorithm visualizer or a Chrome extension that helps you find shopping deals. If you are interested, I have covered all these projects in detail in this earlier video. After following all the steps that we have covered so far, you will feel very confident about your programming skills. In your excitement, you might start applying for jobs. Let me warn you, you might end up disappointing yourself. That's because what they ask in the interviews is very different from what you have learned so far. In the interviews, they ask you very specific kind of problems. These problems look something like this. Given a string S, find the length of the longest substring without repeating characters. You can pause the video and see if you can solve this problem. For most people, it takes a long time to crack problems like this consistently. In the remaining video, we'll cover how to become so good at problems like this that you can solve them within the interview time frame of 45 minutes. There are two steps to achieve this. First, you need to learn the theory behind solving such problems. Next, you need to apply the theory and solve a lot of interview style problems so that you can become quick enough to solve them within 45 minutes. Let's start with the theory. All the theory that you need to solve problems like this comes from one course. This course is called Data Structures and Algorithms. Data Structures is a way of storing data in a computer so that it can be used efficiently. An algorithm is the steps you take where you use this data and complete a task efficiently. Together they form the basis of how computers handle any complex task and this is what you will be tested on in the interviews. There are so many courses out there to learn data structures and algorithms. My personal favorite is this course called Algorithms 1 and Algorithms 2 by Princeton University on Coursera. This course will introduce you to common data structures like arrays, linked lists, stacks, queues and graphs etc. It also covers all the important algorithms like merge sort, depth first search and union find. Why I recommend this course over the others is because it gives you an in-depth understanding of how different algorithms evolved. For example, why was quicksort needed when merge sort was already there? This will help you build algorithmic thinking which will be crucial in the interviews. The only downside of this course is that it's taught in Java. It's not really a downside. It's just that if you're not comfortable with Java, you'll have to work a little extra. You might have to translate the code in the language of your choice using ChatGPT. But I think the extra effort is worth it. Now that your fundamentals are clear, it's time to apply and test your knowledge of data structures and algorithms. Go to this website called leadcode.com. This website contains more than 1500 interview style problems. But don't be scared. We are not going to do all of them. They have this collection of problems called Top Interview 150. We want to start with these 150 problems. In the beginning, focus on the easy problems. Once you start solving easy problems consistently, you can move on to mediums and so on. Whether you manage to solve a problem or not, make sure you read the top 3 most upvoted solutions of others. You will learn a lot from these solutions. When you feel confident about your skills, start timing yourself to see if you can solve the problems end to end within 45 minutes. Because that's all the time you will get in an actual interview. So now you know all the steps to learn programming and become a developer. But many of the people who are still watching this video will not be able to become a developer. That's because programming like any other hard skill requires a lot of dedication over a long period of time. But many people want it to happen in a few months. So they will keep watching videos on how I learned to code in 6 months hoping to find a cheat code. Unfortunately, there is no cheat code to success. The only thing standing between you and the career you want is that keyboard. So get up right now and and start coding and keep doing it for next 365 days. I promise your life will change. Programming languages, 80-20 rule, data structure algorithms and lead code. I have made in-depth videos on all these topics on this channel. I will guide you at every step. Good luck.